Let's continue. The next um, one is from um, uh, Filippo, better known as uh, Falk TX. At least to me, better known as Falk TX. And um, he will talk about his own software um, called Kala. And um, yeah, I want to uh, thank um, first uh, Robin Garius to um, for the support. Thank you, Robin. <laughs> and also uh, next, uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, Tax of the Penguin. Penguin. Um, it, uh, whoever you are, thank you for the donation. It was um, actually donated via a disposable spam email that is only valid for 10 minutes, so I have no way to even uh, write him or her back and say thank you. So that's all I know. Thank you, Penguin. <laughs> Yeah, then uh, let's start. All right. I'll be seated. So, oops. hello everyone. So I'm Philip, uh, as Niels said, also known as FogTX around Linux audio circles. Um, I'll be talking about Carla plugin host that I made myself kind of like six years already in the progress. Always changing, always improving. Um, the first thing that we're doing actually in Sonoy is always starting with a demo. So I'll be showing just one quick thing that I began doing, but it's not finalized, so I'm not going to show everything in just something quick. Um, this is Carla. I will be explaining what everything here is doing. Um, I just Press the play button. There's some sounds in the background. This is actually what it's been sequenced. But the sound is not complete, it needs vocals. I can just skip a little bit to the one minute mark because supposedly someone will be singing there. But I don't have a singer at the moment. You have this application, which is sending MIDI data uh, to Carla, and Carla is the one making all the sounds. But that's it. There would be an intro and then a bass part and the chorus, then another part and the chorus again, and then the song finishes. Um, but it's not complete. At, at least you know that this is able to make some music. But I'm not the best musician myself. So at least it makes noise. And let's go through here. So uh, I just want to give an overview for those people that know, don't know Carla yet, what it does. Um, it's a modular plugin host. This means it's um, something that loads plugins. In this case, uh, it can load pretty much the ones that are available for Linux. You have LATSPA, DSSI, LB2, and uh, VST. Previously, also loaded VST3 and audio unit plugins, uh, which VST3 now works on Linux, but it didn't before. Uh, we'll actually lose these features, but not, no, don't want to get into much details. But the for formats that matter at the moment for Linux people is the ones that Carla can load. Um, you can also load sound banks. This is um, geek files. Uh, sound fonts and um, SFZ files. Uh, for those that care, the geek uh, and SFZ are done via Linux sampler in a thing that Carla calls internally. There's no Linux sampler called in inter externally. Everything is self-contained, and sound fonts are done via fluid synth. The, it's the generic thing in, in Linux to use for sound fonts. Um, Carla can use the Jack. Um, audio server, 
usually done for professional music in Linux, but you can also use the native um, sound systems. Um, also, you can use Pulse Audio. If you use uh, on other systems, you can use Core Audio or something like that. Um, it uses the RT Audio library and RT MIDI to do all the back backend stuff. Uh, next, Carla has a rack and a patch bay mode. I can just show quickly here. I'll just kill it. Oh, sorry. Uh, the rack is the one on the left where you load the plugins, and the patch bay is what you usually get in a modular plugin host. But just continue quickly. Uh, if you use Jack, you can also use um, multi-client instead of having its own self-contained patch bay. Um, it might be useful, for example, if you want, if you have Jack 2 and you have the, um, uh, you have multi-threaded plugin processing, on this case, with Jack 2 and multi-client. Um, Carl itself also works as a plugin, so everything they'll be doing here, you can also do your start your own DAW or anything you want if it loads um, LB2 or VST plugins. And you can, because Carla is also a plugin, you can load Carla inside Carla recursively. Because why not? Uh, there's MIDI, MIDI CC and OSC support, so you can control uh, all the plugin parameters and also change presets via these messages. There is no MIDI learn at the moment because it's a bit tricky in the way that Carla does it. Maybe when I do the controller with Harry stuff, we don't need me to learn, we just select the thing because we know what hardware can do. We'll see. Um, it also supports plugin breaches, uh, currently in experimental state. This means it's possible to load 32 bit plugins in a 62 bit 4 system, uh, or you can load the Windows plugins on Linux as well. Um, Carla does everything by itself, doesn't need any external applications. Um, there's also a few extras, but I'll show it in the end regarding the bridges. Um, some special notes. Um, you have the rack and the patch bay, which is available for all drivers, but single multi-client obviously is just for check. If you don't have check, if you use raw also pulse audio or some other system, operating system, you get the raw and rack and patch bay modes. And also never forget to scan the plugins. Uh, for now, they automatically scan, I mean, to find the plugins that they have on the system. Uh, it's only done by LV2, currently based on the plugin count. Um, so if you remove one plugin and you add another plugin, Carla does not actually know that things change, so you need to force it a, ref a refresh. But, um, because the, there's also drag and drop, Sometimes you not actually need to scan the plugins. As a quick example, I have one random plugin here. I'm going to drag and drop it here. And you have the plugin there. You don't have to scan for it. OK, moving on. Um, yeah, I want to show this, the, giving a small overview of the Carla interface so you can actually know what it's, what everything does. Uh, you have the Rack tab which shows the plugins. I can load this little project. Each plugin here is representing by its own list item, I guess that's the name. Um, and the patch bay is the same representation in the patch bay matter. If you have the Rack mode, I'm going to change it just quickly here. Carla becomes just one thing and everything runs as a rack from top to bottom. If I load the plugins, it starts in the beginning, then process the other one, then the next one, then the next one. It may only have one block for the entire thing. Contrary to using a patch bay, in a patch bay mode, um, each plugin gets its own group, gets its own block. 
So if I load the project again, yeah, it's 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 one of these things is um is a plugin. Uh, on the left side, you have the um, something that you can browse quickly your file system. You can add favorites like bookmarks with a plus and minus sign. For now, I don't have anything, but because I have uh, the projects in my home folder, you can drag and drop from this as well. So I have this thing, and I drag and drop it here as it loads the um, the file. And the transport control oh, transport controls are here. Uh, the usual stuff that you that you get the play, stop, rewind, go forwards, and the BPM as well. This the transport is new; it's a work in progress. For now, it's um, forced to four by four because I don't have a personal need for anything else. I can add support for more; it's not too difficult. But for now, we're just getting it working as it is. Um, I can go through the settings just quickly. Um, on the previous Carla version, it didn't look as fancy, so to speak. I added um, a little switch here, which you can use the old interface. This was how Carla looked um, four years ago, something like that. Now you have custom plugin skins. At the moment, not customizable. It's still hard code. It's still playing with it to find out what can be done, what cannot be done. Um, it will expose um, the first eight uh, parameters of each plugin that are not integer or are not uh, booleans, like on-off switches. So you can switch here, and the same parameter changes there. If the plugin has an interface, of course, the parameters are made in sync. Uh, which one? This one is simpler to show. So the attack is this one. You show it, you move it in one way, one side, it changes in the other, as expected. You have some uh, LED LEDs on the right side. Uh, the first one is the yellow one, which um, lights up when you change a parameter. You can see it there, lighting up on the right side. If you automate a parameter via MIDI or via um, OSC, the same um, the same light turns on to to inform the user that something is being changed, because you. You cannot, it's not always via the GUI, it's sometimes it's via some other way, so you have, want to know if something is coming in. You also have uh, the red one, which is for MIDI. So this lights up because there's MIDI events coming to that plugin. The next one is the green, which means there's audio coming in. It's the same colors used for the meters and the blue is the audio out. So we have these four colors per plugin. Mm, let's see. You have three buttons usually per plugin. The first one is to enable or disable. This is not exactly the same as bypass because on bypass time is still running and the plugin is still processing just in a different way. Um, this completely disables the plugin so it doesn't use any CPU. It's, it's not running at all. The second button is to show the plugin interface, to show and hide it, and the third um, icon is to show the um, settings for the plugin. You can load presets, there are some specific settings, which is um, a bit more complicated, I'm not going to, to go through them. And you ha have access to all the parameters in here. If you want to um, change something via MIDI CC, you do it here. You see what parameters you want to change, you right click and you select from the list whatever CC you want to control it. Because there, oh, I see a radio question actually. How do you do it if you have any uh, plugins loaded? So in case you have more than one plugin loaded, do you use channels to route your messages inside Kala? Well, because in the patch bay mode, you can do pretty much all you want. Um, 
in this case, my MIDI keyboard comes from this little thing, so I can connect it to this to send the notes to the guitar, and then I can connect the same thing to the compression, and then I select the CC for compression. So the MIDI signal does not get sent to all the plugins, because it's that's why MIDI Learn is not implemented yet, because either I ha add a global MIDI in that all plugins listen to, or I have to think about some way to make this work for MIDI Learn. But something to consider later. It's, yeah. Ooh, sorry. <laughs> okay. Um, on the patch base side, you have, as I said, each plugin being one box. You can write this uh, like a normal page bay. You probably saw some other ones already. You drag and drop to connect things. You drag and drop to disconnect again. You can right click to do some actions like disconnect or split so you get a better view of things. Remove or even show the plugin interface. You would dou double click one of the boxes, it shows the plugin interface. And you can uh, remove all plugins as well. Because I'm running in Jack, I'm showing the entire Jack graph as it is. I have the also the Jack MIDI bridge, I have the Pulse Audio bridge running as well. If I op open a random Jack client, hopefully I have it installed, maybe not. Let's say, if I open Ardor, if it opens. No. I guess I can open this little thing, yeah. That's one random Jack client. Ardor took a very long time to start. I cannot remove this plugin because obviously it's not a plugin. And it, I cannot double click to show its thing because it's a normal Jack client. It's not something that it's Carla is managing. Um, okay, and going through the settings again, there's some experimental features. Before I added everything shows showing to the user uh, right away, but I decided to hide everything that is experimental and under this little box. So for example, when you when you disable this and you go to the add plugin, there's no options here, the ones that I already know Carla from before, uh, to select which bridges you want to show. But if I enable the experimental features and I go to the add plugin and enable the bridges actually, because the bridges are experimental. Now you can select the architecture. For I can only search for 32-bit plugins that will run as a bridge because this ex experimental feature, all experimental features are um, hidden away at the moment. It's kind of like a breaking change, but it needs to be done so that the software can be released as stable and still have this in the background. So that experimental features still get released, still get there for people that want them but it's not going to be enabled by default, so we can focus on the stable things. Um, you have some settings for the canvas. The canvas is theme themable, although in Python. I can change the theme, for example, and it looks a little bit different now. Uh, and the, I already have some pull requests to add some different themes and some um, changes in the patch bay. I'll have to review them soon. You can also, for example, tweak if you want normal lines or Bezier lines, that's the usual stuff. The size of the patch bay is always fixed because you, we have a mini canvas on the left, so we need to do all the calculations for that. So the size is always going to be fixed. The engine is not so anything special. You can select the other drivers that you want to use. The process mode, because the Jack is the only one that allows this multi single and multiple clients, if you select something else, you get the rack or the patch bay. The paths is where you, 
set up where you can find the plugins. Because Carla loads sound banks as well, you can add where your sound fonts are located. So you can scan. And after you scan, I can hide away everything and actually only show um, sound fonts that I have installed, which are not exactly plugins, but Carla will treat them as if they were a plugin, because for Carla it's the same. On the experimental features, you have, if you want to enable the wine stuff, you can do so here. So it runs to Windows applications. It, the build for that is a bit more complicated than the usual, but if you're interested, I can let you know how to get that working. Anyway, um, yeah, to refresh the plugins, you click the Add plugin, you go to the Refresh, and then select wherever you want to refresh. There's no cache at the moment, so every time you need to add a new plugin, if it's not drag and drop, you have to go through all the plugins. It's, it takes some time, but for... Hmm? It says press start to begin the search, there is a scan, not start. Yeah, uh, some, someone recommended me to, to change the text from start to scan and I forgot to change it there. <laughs> but okay, good note, good note. <laughs> okay, um, I want to go through some work, basic work, uh, workflows um, so you get used to it. The first thing probably is people would do, actually I think I need to change this. Uh, because I split the client, not this one, but I need to join. There you go. Um, actually, I'm I'm going to do this manually. I can drag and drop an SVG file, which I have here. You have to drag and drop into the rack, not into patch bay just yet. But you have, this is the SVZ file. If you press the notes below, you can see that it's um, actually doing something, but because it's not connected to the system output, there is no audio coming from it. So if I connect it, now I press some keys, then you have some basic audio. If you want to use a MIDI keyboard, you just connect uh, from Jack itself the MIDI to there, and then you get some sound out of it. Um, this is the basic thing. You just load plugins, for example, now adding a small reverb. You have to disconnect, actually, the previous one. and then connect to it again. Yeah, so now I added a reverb. Um, you go through the MIDI input to the SVZ file, then to the reverb and then to the system output, which is pretty standard. What usually you can you do for um, this type of hosts is that you get um, a MIDI sequencer, so you don't have to keep pressing things all the time. And here I have a ba basic MIDI sequence. This is a plugin by Robin, actually. Um, and it's currently controlled by the host. So if I go into the transport and I press play, yeah, then you have a sequence that is always playing and sending notes to that. Uh, to that plugin and generating your own sound. And the next step to make this a little bit more interesting, and I have a real already a little project here, is exactly the same setup, but I added some plugins, which every, every, for now they're all uh, disabled. So I press transport to play. Everything is playing okay. I added the reverb, which is currently uh, all the way to the dry signal. And I can enable the full thing. So 
So you have your own reverb. What I added as a way to show what modular hosts, hosts can do is on the same signal that comes from the guitar, there's the reverb, but from the original single um, signal, there's also an, an EQ to, um, to give some more attention to specific frequencies and then passing through the compression. But in a way that you can apply EQ to the original single null and also reverb like if it was a bus, and then it gets mixed out um, in, in the end. And you can have multiple paths branching this way in very complicated setup. Um, the compression is also um, it's actually a multiband compressor made on purpose so that I have everything playing. I add the EQ, I enable the EQ. And what I'm going to do next is um, sequencing some drums and just sending the drums as to the compressor as sidechain and then to the output as well. So you get basically this. And I can disable the drums. Enable them again and disable the guitar in here. Usually you would get uh, some other sequencer or hardware to make this automatic or something like uh, Seek Sequencer 64 or... Yeah, so you can automate everything and construct some more complex things out of this. For now, I'm just basically showing what you can do. The, all the sequencing, you can focus it not on it yourself. Um, another thing, I, the next thing I can show you, actually, if you guys have any questions, just um, feel free to ask away, because... Is there a mic? Yeah. Um. I love this program and I use it a lot, especially for live performance. It's like the thing I I see like the only option to, to do with anything live uh, with synthesizers and effects and controlling them with MIDI. Uh, is it possible to maybe uh, work out some more user-friendly ways of managing the connections when you, for example, insert a plugin between two other plugins? And <laughs> because... I don't know if you ever used uh, Blender compositing, for example. Not really. <laughs> they have I something that you can, for example, grab like one plugin with control and drop it onto a connection and it will be inserted between the two things that were before there. So we can insert an effect b between two other without yeah. removing connections and, and re re rebuilding them manually. It's something to keep in mind, yes. Um, I, ha I had the same request done a couple of times, so I know oh, yeah. it's people want it. Um, it's just that for, first I want to focus on the 2.0 release, which has been cooking for three years, maybe. <laughs> know that feel, bro. Yeah, yeah. And after that, we can go slowly through one feature. Like Each feature gets a dot one release bump, and then the software can keep growing. Um, I actually had to fix a couple of things to come here to show because <laughs> usually I do it in another computer. Somehow this one needed a couple of fixes, but the software is growing. It's it's getting better. Uh, yes, but yeah, I, I I heard the request. Yeah, it's it's going to be added. Yes. Although the next example that I wanted to show kind of goes with it um, because you have the rack mode. Let me change the engine modes. You can actually, I could add Carla inside Carla here. Like this is the rack mode, one Carla running inside Carla. But to make things simpler, I'm just going to change things here so the actual engine is a rack. So let me just connect this thing. Another request that I know probably mother, a lot of people have is that it auto connects uh, when it's rack mode or something like that. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but yeah, well, with the rack mode, what I want to show you is that you don't have to handle connections anymore with this. Um, 
if I add the guitar here, I only have to connect the MIDI port once. And I already have some sound. And that works. Usually what you the cool thing you can do is add a MIDI plugin. In this case a MIDI chord, which basically does a chord if I just press one note. If I add the guitar afterwards. Yeah, this is just one note that I'm playing on the piano keyboard. And it doesn't yeah. <laughs> I'm not I'm not a musician myself, so I do all those tricks and the computer does cool things for me. So because this is goes from top to bottom, uh, you can add multiple MIDI plugins. One cool thing that people usually do is add a MIDI chord, then the MIDI strum, which goes through all the notes in a not at the same time but slowly, and then you can add the guitar at the end, and it sounds like this. I can increase the time it takes to do the strumming. So now... Yeah. In, in this mode, you don't have to worry about connections at all. It's just top to bottom. Um, one cool thing that this can allow you to do is that if the plugin does not have audio ports, like a MIDI, MIDI plugin, the audio gets passed from one plugin to the other, bypassed completely. If the plugin does not have MIDI ports, a MIDI out, the MIDI in from the previous plugin uh, gets copied over. So if I have the guitar here, for example, and then I have an ARP, the same MIDI notes that go to the guitar also go to the ARP. Like, let me silence this guitar a little bit. So I can now ha add a bunch of synthesizers at the same time, I'll always playing the same notes. And some question already. Is uh, plug-in ordering in the rack mode already implemented yet? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I remember the question two years ago. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it is not very hard, it's already implemented in the back end. I just need to add a um, move up or something, some button in here, but in the backend side of things, everything's already working. Uh, the trick that I still tell people to use when they want to move things is to clone and then delete the first instance. <laughs> that way that plugin gets to the end. It's kind of like sorting. It's cheating, but it works. Um, one thing that I actually, I actually did this yesterday, because because I was preparing for the demo. Um, what I'm going to do here is add a special Carla rack version, which has no MIDI outputs. Uh, so you get... Actually, I need to add something here. I'm going to add a piano. So you can build a rack out of racks? Yes. And then this, the MIDI from... I'm going to show you. <laughs> so you have a MIDI chord playing the piano. Basic stuff. Um, you can add... I'm going to add two racks, actually. One, two, because I already know what I'm going to do. And I add the strum at the end, the same thing as before. I'm going to set this to one and add the guitar as well. So we have the piano and then um, later on, because the piano has no MIDI output, so the notes from the piano is also the notes that get sent to the every single one of them. You have the piano playing the chords and then at the same time the um, guitar but with a strum effect on top. Uh, and now I have two color racks in between, and because they have no MIDI output, what gets sent to the next plugin is the same that comes from the beginning. So I can add whatever stuff I want here, 
the usual trick is to have an arpeggiator. Let's see, like this. And an ARP is already here. Let's see if this actually does. Ah, and I need to. I, this plugin needs the, um, the arpeggiator needs the transport to be rolling. You have the basic ARP doing things. But the arpeggiator goes through the notes that you're playing. Because I'm playing one note as actually a chord, I press one note and it goes through the chord in the arpeggiator. So I press this. You start to build a sequence with things like this. And then you can have multiple layers of this. You can ha add another arpeggiator. In this case, a smaller one. Let me just disable this ARP sound so it doesn't get in the way. Wait, not this one. And I'm going to add here a xylophone. Let's see. OK, the arpeggiator is doing basic stuff. And I can add a real little delay here and make it ping pong. And because this is after the piano, the effect applies on the piano and on the previous sounds as well. So the piano will get the delay sound and the xylophone as well. So you have the xylophone with the, with the delay, but then because the guitar is after it, the guitar does not get the effect because the the effect is on this little thing. It's top to bottom. And now I enable the ARP again, which also will get a 3D delay. You get a, a small sequence like this with just one key. It does all this by itself. That's usually how I prepare my music. <laughs> just try to come with um, smart ways to make things dynamic and then just press a bunch of keys, one or two, and it does everything. Let's see. I think I have, have the example working here already. Yeah. The same exact setup, which I hope works. Kimidi ARP does not always lay, load the preset correctly. So I actually need to go here and load this thing. I have I will I will report this bug. But at least now I know about it. I have the rack, just Carla running as a rack and then MIDI sequencer in the beginning. So just pressing play. One note. Very, slow, very slowly, then change it to the other notes, change it to the next note. And you get the idea. Yeah, just um, you can leave this running. I have actually left this running all night as a test. <laughs> and it's. It's played indefinitely. Then usually you have some other MIDI sequencer more complicated than this, but for now, for testing purposes, this works well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You you can actually why not? <laughs> I'm actually loading the Zena sub effects distortion, which I've actually let me lower the volume just to be safe. Just add as, as many effects as you want. Um, and 
now that you made this, you could actually save this uh, as a project. You lo load in your DAW and you have this entire thing as one instrument in your DAW, for example. So it, it doesn't have to be standalone. I, I usually do it standalone because it's just to practice and to play live. But if you want to sequence in your own DAW, you can do it as well. No issues there. Um, let's new again. Everything is cleared. I, ha I have the same thing as here as well as a test, but I'll skip this one for time. Another thing that you can do in modular hosts, I'm just going to show you very briefly, but without actually making the sound, is if you get plugins specifically made for modular um, setups, one of them, one of them is this one, which has four inputs, stereo inputs, and one output. And you can see on the interface, the green ball controls where the, sound, the audio comes from. So we, what a trick that I usually do is add uh, four pads, four different pads, pad sounds, and then this kind of modulates between them. Different sources, the plugin is automatable, you can select different things. So if you have plugins made specifically for modular setups, you can do anything you want. And it, it, it produces nice results, but I don't have a demo set up for this at the moment. I did it back in two years ago. The, the same rules still apply. Um, yeah, you, you get, I, hopefully you get the idea with this. I never know what this plugin is doing. <laughs> I mean, it has um, one question actually. Um, are you saying this is not possible in a in a rec approach, which I would find in a typical sequencer or DA, DA, um, w So, if a, in in Ardor, that wasn't wouldn't be possible to use. I mean, you could have a eight no eight uh, input bus with two outputs and then. It makes it, I don't know. It, it's not convenient. Not convenient, no. Okay. Even this side chain that was uh, added recently, mm -hmm. um, for a long time you had to do some very nasty tricks to get side chain working. But at least for that case is handled now, okay. which is nice. Thanks. But yeah. If this, on this case, it makes it uh, easier to have this kind of setups because with the modular host, you can see exactly what it's doing. And then you save, export, load the plugin, and then import the plugin with everything inside. Um, one thing that you can actually do, because everything here is plugins and it's running in Jack, this is actually one of the reasons I started doing Carla. And actually, I have to see if I still have one video around. I'm actually going to lower the volume because I don't have to, don't want to get into copyright problems. But if, if I have a random video, which is actually going through Pulse Audio, and for example, the video is too low, I, even with the sound maxim, in maximum, the video is still too low. What you can actually do is getting an EQ, for example. This is coming from the Pulse Audio bridge. So the, this, the media player is outputting here, and then I can add a bunch of effects on top, live. And with this, I basically ramp up the gain. And now I get proper sound out of the video. Or I can filter the video for noise or something like this, because with, with Jack, you can do anything like this. I do that all the time at work. <laughs> I run Carla and I use Spectrograph to, to see what the music I'm listening to is doing, where the snare is, where the kicks are. Or to filter stuff out. <laughs> yeah, for for monitoring and stuff like that, and fixing random audio sources, it works quite well, I think. Um, now I can show you uh, some of the new exciting stuff that not everyone knows about it, because uh, when I was testing with plugin bridges, running things in um, separate processes. 
I was wondering if I could apply that to Jack applications as well. Because the Jack applications just load the Jack library in the same way that Carly is doing for the bridges. So why not to try to make something that can run Jack applications inside Carla? As, as, so that they work as a plugin, because it's basically just a bridge in the end. And the bonus of that, my intention for that, was to fix um, the consistent, consistent ports. If you have something like Audacity, which I can even show now. You have Audacity, you load a random file. Is it connected to system output? No. And actually, this is mono, not connected anywhere. Oh, now it's connected. <laughs> yeah, that, that's exactly the problem. You have Audacity, which provides the ports, but if you want to apply something live on top of it or something, some effects on the input, it's not really easy because every time you stop, your client is gone. And then the port names will be different. Yes, and, and the port names are different. Yes, you have to have regex rules and yeah. manage the auto-connect <laughs> system. That's why. And also, now there's also the Firefox with Jack support, which has the same issue. But hopefully not for long. Um, so that's the new option to add a Jack application. In this case, I type the command, which is Audacity. There's one very nice trick, which is the control the application window. This basically intercepts the X11 calls that the application is doing. So I actually, let's just do it. I started Audacity. You can see there's something running here. I press this button to show the plugin interface. And it's actually Audacity uh, window that pops up. If I load the same file I had before, I press play. You can see that this is sending audio actually not to the system, but it's sending to Carla. Let's move this away. And now if I connect this to the system, and I know I muted the volume. Yeah, and I stop, and you can see the client is still there, not doing anything like. There's no change. I can press play. I, then I can add some effect on top or even before recording. And it still works. So that means I can finally run hydrogen as a plugin, for example. Yes, so someone is asking if I, we can add hydrogen as a plugin. The question is yes. The answer is yes. I double click it and I can see the thing here. Let's see, do I have a random song? Let's just open a demo. When you exit the, the wait, wait, wait. <laughs> <laughs> this is controlled by transport. So I press the transport here. And it, it, the, the application itself provides check transport. So this is nothing especially new. But this transport is provided by the, um, by the host. This together with the thing I'm going to show you now, it's quite fancy. But yes, as someone was asking, if I close this, the actual plugin disables itself because the application closed completely. So there's no more sound, there's more, no more processing. But you can just click on this to enable the plugin and the application restarts. And open the window and you have the same, you have it back again. You can hide and show the interface with this little button as it, if it was a normal plugin and also wrong radio question. That's maybe a little bit much to ask, but I will ask anyway. Um, is there any kind of session management if you close it and open it again? Is it still the same file in Audacity, for example? No, there's no session management at the moment. Because this is very experimental, as yeah, the, yeah, yeah. the name says. 
like you have to actually enable experimental and enable Jack applications. Um, I already added the selector here for the session management, and it, it will come eventually. Um, after I get some um, session folder set up for Carla, so that it, it, it's no longer just a self-contained file, then we can see how session management works. Because I see with this, you can forget about some other session managers, because then Carla does everything. <laughs> you, and also, <laughs> one thing I actually forgot to, sh to demonstrate, that Carla by default has dry wet for effects, the volume and the panning for each single plugin. So with this, you get per volume the uh, jack application uh, control. So if your jack application does not have a mixer like an output volume, you can just disable it here. I can mute the sound from Audacity or give it back. And Audacity does, knows nothing about it. It's for, for Audacity, it pretty much it's running on a jack, um, jack server. Because if you run something like patches, which is um, like Carla at Patch Bay, you can see that it actually thinks that there are system ports in there, but it's running a fake thing in, as a bridge. You can also run Jack, uh, Carla inside Carla this way, but there's no point in it. <laughs> Another question? A geek in me wants to ask, uh, could we do fake session management by managing memory snapshots of applications run inside Carla? <laughs> like, just just dump the memory that the program is running in, and with all the things, and just store it as a preset, and I, then recall that. I'm not sure if that's possible. We, I don't know if that, we can try. I'm not. Maybe that's the easiest sure. way, you know, because there are many things that can be stored with session management in the usual manner, like yes, some weird settings, like you can. But then you also save some other things that you don't want to, probably. Yeah, file handles, the jack connections, you will have everything, but graphics. You the, There is some session managers defined already, protocols, the NSTM being the best one so far, I think. And some applications are already supported. If we get an application that also supports NSTM, I guess it will um, give incentive for more applications to support this as well. So, it, yeah, another question. Um, I can, um, so Kala also uh, shows up as an LV2 plugin, or yes. uh, so I can uh, uh, plug it into some uh, LV2 host. Uh, will it get the transport signals from the host then? Yes, um, Kala receives transport from the host as an LV2 or a VST plugin. And then it transmits that plugin to the Jack application running inside as a Jack transport. And I can demonstrate this um, with, yeah, the answer is yes. So, uh, so I could, uh, so I could wrap hydrogen into Kala and put that as an LV2 plugin into Ardour, and yes. uh, still hydrogen inside Kala would get the transport signal from Ardour. Yeah, why not? All right, you, you can do that. Okay, thanks. But the new, the new extra thing I added, this one is not complete yet at all, but I can demonstrate because it's something that I want to do. It was requested by a user on IRC several times, so I eventually just did it. You can export any plugin that Carla can load as an LV2 plugin. Be it a plugin bridge, be it a sound font, be it an internal plugin, be it a Jack application. For now, it's only for effects, because I'm still experimenting if it's working or not, and so far it does. So, uh, actually, let's get Audacity, because Audacity does not, get, does not have MIDI ports. So I have Audacity here running inside Carla, and I just close it. I'm going to right-click and select the Export LV2 option. I'm going to export it, and currently the export is actually broken, but it doesn't matter. I'm calling this Audacity of LV2. Put 
put this in my LB2 folder. And just to show you the content inside, for people that know LB2 plugins, you have Audacity and the UI, and you have the definitions for the port. This is an LB2 plugin. If I run LB2 LES, and I grab for Audacity, maybe lowercase. Yeah. Now this sudden random LB2 plugin is here. We can try to load it inside JALV, although it's this external plugin, so use something else. And it crashes. <laughs> <laughs> but the, to demonstrate that this because this is very experimental. What I can demonstrate this feature is with a Lutzpa plugin to be as simple as possible. For example, this one, the tab chords. I can export this one. And I need to fix this export. This was tab.lv2, I don't know what Exactly this thing was. Put it in dot lv2. Which one was it? This one. Yeah, I this is one of the plugins that I exported. And I'm running the plugin, which is actually a Latspa plugin, but wrapped inside the Bare bones Scarlet, it is not running any engine by itself, it's pushing the data directly to the plugin, and then it appears as an LV2 plugin. There's still some Scarlet stuff inside, but it minimizes everything, so you don't have to run an entire Scarlet just to be able to run one single plugin. This might be useful, for example, if you have a really nice Windows plugin that you want, you want to load it in your DAW, but you don't want to have an entire Carla running just to have one single plugin in there. And maybe the plugin provides um, ports that are not compatible with, with REC, because REC is just stereo. And this way, you can have any configuration of out outputs and inputs and MIDI and everything. Uh, everything gets pushed to the plugin, and the plugin just receives all the data. So, and yeah, no question? And this means, yes, the Jack applications get exported as LV2 plugins. Yeah. <laughs> uh, would the same be possible for VST, because there are some VST-only hosts on Linux? It is. I don't see why not. Um, I did the LV2 first, because it uh, seems like yeah. the usual choice to do first, but could be done for VST. That would just... be awesome. <laughs> Okay, okay. I can, I can do that after I finish this LV2 thing. Um, is I was going to say something. Okay, we have um, the time. Do you have the, the time uh, in mind? Um, so, I was only going to show one more thing. Yeah, okay, please do. Um, because I spoke about OSC support. Uh, let me load, not this one. This is not too complicated. The same setup I had before, I'm just going to lower the volume a little bit on purpose and make it play. Yeah, the sound is low on purpose. I'm going to the About window on Carla and copying this little thing here. I actually did not test this at all, so I'm not sure if it works. What I'm, what I'm going to do is running Carla Control which is a special version of Carla that has no backend, but only speaks OSC. And you just get the address from um, Carla in the About window. And I'm going to remove here the name because it might get conflicts. Yes. Supposedly this works over network, but I'm not going to test it the network because it's, you know, might not be too stable. But I can disable everything remotely and the main Carla instance, let me put it on this side and this on this side. Here. So 
So someone on the other room will have the main Carla instance running, and I have on OSC, for example, running on Windows or Mac, so I don't have all the plugins or vice versa. And I control Carla stuff here. If I change on one side, it obviously changes on the other side, and it's true for the reverse as well. And one question. Can you add plugins and change connections too, th that way? No, at the moment, and I, I can explain why. It's because the remote system might not be the same as the uh, main system. So then it's, I need to implement a way to browse the actual files on the server. Because if I click here, load state, I actually need to disable this. <laughs> you load files on your system, and you're telling the server, which is a completely different computer, to load this file, which is never going to work. So there needs to be some, some more implementation there, so you can remotely browse files. And yeah? That, are you thinking about making this uh, happen? Is this on your own map somewhere? Not for 2.0, but for 3.0, I guess so, yeah. That, that would enable some cool online, you know, LAN party with Carla, everybody yes. having a <laughs> one just one big jam session on a single Jack server. That would be awesome. Yes. For for the LV2 plugins and internal plugins, this can already be possible because they have unique identifiers. They don't load the binary from the system. You have a string which corresponds to the plugin. So that part is the easiest one. Um, one thing that I want to add that is not there for OSD support is the, um, showing the actual plugin interface remotely. Because with LV2, you have the clear separation of DSP and UI. Then you have Carlo run, running on a remote system, on a remote computer. If you have the same um, plugin installed, it means you have the binary, you have the resources to show the interface of the plugin. And Carla already does this, showing the plugin uh, UI separately from DSP. So it's basically just showing up the interface remotely for your LV2 plugin. Like you have, I imagine having the IQ, the button will be enabled, then you get the graph and you get everything. It might get slow for those plugins that send visual data. Um, I think the IQ does it. The plugins that implement atoms should work a bit slower than usual, but they will work, yes. There's nice things coming. <laughs> okay. Um, one last thing that I can show, because maybe not everyone knows. Um, everybody pr probably knows LMMS, but not everyone knows that you can run Carla inside LMMS. It works as a plugin in there. So everything that you saw here, you can run it inside LMMS as well, because Carla is a plugin there. Because Carla, uh, LMMS does not support native Linux plugins except for LATSPA, and this way you can run uh, LB2, VST, DSSI, whatever stuff inside LMMS to complement it. And yeah, for me, that's it. Uh, any more questions, actually? Yes. So I poked through the source of color a bit and um, uh, discovered that you wrote some interfacing into Jack and Python. And I actually used uh, one of these libraries for a little tool I wrote. Um, would you be open for pull requests to separate rating out these libraries as their own projects? I think you mean Cadence that has a libjack. Uh, yeah, it's. I think it's reused in in Carla. No, uh, uh, or it's Cadence maybe. Yeah. Cadence, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Carla does. It has its own backend in C plus plus, and then mm -hmm. a C types uh, thing in Python. So it's, yeah, yeah. I mean the C types thing. Yeah, that can be reshared. Yes, mm -hmm. I, I just need to know exactly how you actually install those things via Python. Mm -hmm. Because right now I only have basic make files and install things. That Python library itself, yeah. um, I yeah. don't install I'm, it. I'm a Python expert. I think we can figure out something. Yes, we, we can talk then. Okay, cool. <laughs> For sure. Yeah. 
you, you have the Carla backend and then the Carla utils, which is for scanning plugins and some other miscellaneous things that Python does not provide that I need in the UI. So, for example, reparenting things from the X11 and some other tricks that Python does not provide initially, so there's there's a small library for it. Uh, okay, nothing okay. else? Okay, one, final, one final question. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> go, go. Uh, I, I was wondering, uh, regarding preparing Carla projects uh, for live performance, uh, for example, when you have multiple songs and you have... Um, lots of plugins and the DSP load is high. I was thinking about finding a way to disable like part of the tree in Carla and someone was, I see on GitHub, said he's writing a, uh, a script to run multiple Carla instances and pause them yeah. when he doesn't need them. Uh, do you think it would make sense for Carla to have some functionality for that internally? <laughs> for example, uh, have some object that could switch off uh, like pr branch off different parts of the of the project and switch them off, or maybe a way to disable plugins um, automatically. Yeah, with uh, with MIDI CC or or SC or something. It, it needs to be done. Uh, it's not it's not possible yet. That's why you're asking, I guess, because right now all the messages that Carla receives via MIDI it needs to be done in real time, and disabling the plugin is not a real time operation. But if we usually it's fine if we wait a tiny millisecond for it to happen in another thread. So uh, that and there was something else as well. The changing presets, yeah, it's not something that can be done in real time, but it's something very useful to have. To have. So it's something that I, I want to add. Yes, those two things. And yeah, if there's no more questions, then yeah. thank you, thank you very, very, thank you very, very much. much.